Hey guys, Alex, better known as Antigrapist here. Today I want to talk to you about the first match I played in the Chang Tank Open, sponsored by, put on by the Fly Better and Gold Squadron Podcasts. And really quickly, it's a, about a 500 person online vassal tournament, single elimination, and the catch is that everyone is assigned random squads. And so the squad I ended up with is this list. Um, basically, it's a five ship a separatist list. Um, I have two Bubba Starfighters. One, this Cohen Ace, pretty much no upgrades. Um, I fight it in this round as a flanking ship because it doesn't really synergize with the rest of the list. Um, but Watt Tambor really synergized with the rest of the list. He has Solus one to keep him alive. He's Kraken to get my other ships uh, calculate. And then I have two bombers, one with concussion and prox mines and a shield upgrade. Um, the second one with the plasma torpedo and it's PS3. Um, both landing strats, pretty nice. And then my Trade Federation drone, which in this list I mainly tried to I tried to use it as like a a calculate battery for my other ships. It didn't really end up working out that way, but hey, it's a pretty solid list. Um, unfortunately, I ended up with a rough matchup. As a gal, my first round opponent is playing two Thai BA interceptors and backdraft. And these things are really scary because they're higher pilot skill and they're both packing Daredevil. Um, they have some other upgrades. Um, Hollow has deuterium power cells, which allow you to do a downgrade other tokens to stress or recover a shield. Um, Magpulse warheads, which aren't that useful. Um, and then Targeting Synchronizer, which he actually got some value from. Cluster Missiles, Delt Device. Um, Backdraft has Advanced Optics, Homing Missiles, Hotshot Gunner. I mean, it's just fail safe. Um, looking at the matchup, it's pretty bad. He has all PS4 and PS5 ships. They're going to move after me. It's going to be hard for my ships to get target locks to use their munitions. And with Daredevil, he can like... He can use the fine-tuned thrusters to barrel roll and then do a boost or a daredevil boost after all of my ships have moved. So it's pretty scary. Um, the only upside for, for me is that his backdraft is terrible. Homing missiles are garbage. Hotshot gunner is garbage. Like, he really would have liked special forces gunner, but didn't end up with it. So if I can avoid chasing after backdraft, backdraft will be hard to get much value from. Okay, so let's let's start the the log. Okay. Um, one of the great things about this being about playing on Vassal is you can log your games, look back through them, and also you can like stop at any point during the log file execution, uh, make a copy of a ship, try out alternative moves, see where you could improve, um, looking at your games and where you made mistakes and your tactics and how they played out, really can give you a lot. It's a great way to improve, and I would suggest people try it out. So my opponent got my opponent is running three gas clouds. A little bit unlucky for me, gas clouds and uh, landing stress don't work together. So my opponent decides to put his first obstacle. He places one of the rocks in the corner, and we'll go through the, the placement really quickly, and then talk about okay. So this fourth obstacle, it was my choice. I chose to put a rock in the middle. I figured it was good to have a rock in the middle where I could land on it if I wanted to. Um, um, I put this gas cloud here. Having the gas clouds on my side, it's a big advantage. Like I will fly past them and never really have to worry about them again. And my opponent, I think, made a mistake in this obstacle. I think this was not a good... Um, obstacle placement for my opponent. Like his ships have a lot of like action economy. They can barrel roll. They can boost. They can do both. Um, my ships want to stick together. They want to be next to each other for the network calculations. They want to be next to each other for Kraken. Like flying more ships, you want to stick your ships together and fly in formation sometimes. And this is really easy to do that. There are four, you know, four large lanes. None of these obstacles are really going to be in the way. Um, I would suggest putting gas clouds in the middle in a triangle. That was what I did not want to see. Um, and potentially if I had put something in the middle to begin with, like 
and you could have like four or five things in the middle and it could get really obnoxious really quickly. Um, I really wanted to put obstacles in the corner. Um, generally, I think this, this placement worked out pretty well for me. Um, my initial strategy was to fly in a four by four box on my ships, um, give all my ships focus, try and get target, or calculate tokens, try and get target locks as I can, and essentially have more action economy to outshoot them initially. Um, and then run my Sicilian Ace as a flanker. Um, initial setup, I have the Ace and Watt swapped, so I quickly swap them out. Um, yeah, and I'm, we'll see it as the round starts, but I'm putting this guy here, I'm gonna do one of those classic like Ace tricks. I'm gonna one turn him up, I'm gonna barrel roll him over, and then once I'm up here, I'll have lots of options. I can one turn and barrel roll him back, and in round two, be back over here facing this way. I can go around here. Like, I don't have to go in this way. I'm not planning on going down this lane. And maybe my opponent thinks I will, and that's to my advantage. Um, one thing I'll mention is I sort of, in my formation, you want to have your threes either in the back or side by side. Um, you don't want to have them in the front because then your your ones are going to move first and you know your ships will be in the way if you want to move them in the box the wrong way um if you don't anticipate going down you can have them both threes here and both ones here if you don't anticipate going down in this lane which would have been pretty unlikely to, in most circumstances um the advantage if i had my sb here was then I could move Watt first, I could run into it, and Watt would essentially only go, would, would essentially stay in place. He'd move about half a base forward. And it give me some flexibility. It's one of those things that I really value when running like four or five ship rebels, is the ability to like run one of your back ships into your front one, and you know, your opponent tries to K turn where Watt is now, blocked him. And it would have been helpful a little bit later on, but ends up not working out. So I just go for a straight up. Or forward. My opponent kind of spaced all his ships out. Um, I wasn't really sure what he was going to do. I wasn't, I don't know, I haven't played this sort of matchup very much. Never really played Separatists, which we'll see because I missed some abilities that could have been pretty helpful. Um, I'm just trying to go forward, forward here, get past the gas clouds as soon as possible, um, have options to break up into the map, um, have options to go forward and catch a ship that's moving too slowly into position. Um, in retrospect, maybe taking the bottom path and having my ace still up here would have been better. Um, I'm concerned that it's going to take a long time and my ace is going to be off on his own and like Ember, any, any of these ships, a one-on-one -on -one will kill my Segoian ace or at least trade effectively with it. And that's, you know, something I'm not wanting to risk. Having this ship up here means that if you know, backdraft and ember go after Skull and Ace. If they were down here, it'd be hard for my ships to really capitalize and get up there fast enough to keep Skull and Ace from dying. Um, but with this obstacle placement, it is a little tricky to like turn in. Um, so he does, you know, boost bar barrel roll boost down here. He did a, you know barrel roll boost up here. Um, both those moves are telling me my opponent is committed to attacking this box of ships. Um, Skoine Ace is essentially a little bit out of position. It's a little too slow as, like I said, a little scared of like Ember, like trying to take him on one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so it's gonna be a little bit of a struggle to get this guy into the fight fast enough to be effective. Um, Backdraft has some interesting options here. You can only like two turn in if you really wanted to. And that puts you in potentially taking a lot of fire. You know, like one bank up, have like a rear arc shot, or potentially even like two turn to the right and try and get me to chase you. Um, probably would have been the way to go versus what he ends up doing. Okay, and if you're not familiar with Vassal, there's a, there's a dice box here that's going to show any of the rolls. Um, there's a chat window here where we talk, that's how we communicate throughout the match, and there's also um player tabs where we're changing dials to have our ships and crits and all those sort of like tokens then later end up on the map. Okay, so this is sort of, this is a crucial turn. Um, going into round two. 
Speaking of, uh, it's a 12-round tournament, or 12-round game. So at the end of round 12, whoever's head on points will win. Um, just something to keep in mind towards the end of the game. It just doesn't go on forever, and there's not a time limit like normal in-person tournaments. So I do. I plan on doing a three, three bank with my ace, and then boost, try and get him back in a position. Um, I end up going with just a four forward on my um, my two by two box. Um, this move is a little greedy. It's trying to get a uh, target walks on hollow. If I do four forwards, I'll be able to pick them up. Um, it's also really predictable. Um, it's, it's the obvious move. I don't, at the time, I did, wasn't sure where hollow was going, but I thought if I did this, anywhere hollow went, he'd be either out of the fight or I could punish him. He'd be, you know, in multiple firing arcs. Um, ends up not quite being the case. So let's see what... Okay, my SB, Separatist Bomber, ends up having to take a target lock and backdraft instead of hollow. Um, a little bit suboptimal, but, you know. He says target lock, I have all these calculate tokens, I don't need another one. Um, I have a little bit of a disconnect issue throughout the game. Um, due to a boost, he got a position, he does a one right bank, sort of puts him in a good position to get value from his rear arc and ability. Um, okay, and Hollow does a five forward, which honestly is pretty impressive. I think, so let's look, if we copy, then we do a template move. So this is one potential place he could move to. Instead chooses to do a barrel roll, um, turn so let's look i guess it's about the same here he would have a target lock um this is probably a little bit better position in the second round so about i don't know i think that boost is maybe a little greedy like you the target locks are pretty valuable but it could be could be worse Okay, so, and here he uses Hollow's ability to get that, you know, the second action and pass the strain off to Ember, who's not going to get shot this round. It's a pretty, pretty slick move. Um, helps him out, because uh, right now, Watt's going to shoot him back. Okay, so, he shoots Separatist. Bomber, he gets one crit through. Um, damage sense array, which is pretty obnoxious. Um, backdraft um, only gets one damage onto tub. It just takes the shield. I have the shield upgrade. Um, he ends up, com you know, not being super happy about that because now Ember shoots at Separatist Bomber, and Ember's ability is inactive because there's no damage ship next to Separatist Bomber. Talk about this. He plays the throws some cluster missiles out, um, get some good rerolls, um, and take another hit crit. And have a fuel leak, which is not the crit I want to see. If I take another crit, it's going to give me effectively an extra damage, and I will be dead for sure. And then cluster missiles takes a second shot on the Watt. Um, zoom in. I don't know if that's actually an arc. We can actually check. Okay, it is. All right, so good move for my opponent, getting that customer shot off. Um, anyway, I end up not being able to spend my focus token. It ends up being a pretty. In general, that probably was not a shot i wanted to s i didn't really want to use my focus token defensively like this is not a good position for me um i'm taking damage i only have one shot back in return so i really need to make that one shot count and luckily it's on my best ship um 
to shoot a hollow, the ship I'm like most interested in killing, um, and managed to roll four hits. So that at the time that felt pretty lucky, but that's because I wasn't remembering that Watt has an ability. Um, hollow is next to three calculating friendly ships to Watt. Um, so effectively, I had you know four dice, three rerolls, and a focus token. Um, generally, you're doing about three damage there. So um, he rolls. He rolls one evade, keeps him alive. If he had like not rolled that evade, he probably would have lost the game on the spot. So a little bit lucky for my opponent. Um, but I'm, I mean, I say a little bit lucky, but it's only like a twenty percent chance if you run the math on um, killing Hollow in a single shot. So. Um, so getting the three damage roll was pretty important. Um, I think mo I think it's generally pretty understood that um, if a swarm ship and an ace ship are sort of equal at two hundred points, um, you know that's that's one thing. But when you get down to both squads having hundred points left, sort of in like the mid game, um, the swarm ship is losing. Um, the ace the aces will be able to reposition out of firing arcs. They'll be able to like kill an enemy ship before it can fire is like generally a swarm ship is sort of ahead in the early game and needs to convert that into some sort of advantage um i sort of haven't done that that well so far this is sort of like this shot is sort of putting me sort of even um having my ace out of position is really not helping things but we will we'll get him back into the fight next round hopefully all right so i mean i guess the point of that is this is sort of an even position. I need to need to quickly work on getting an advantage because the long game doesn't favor me. Um, ace players have an advantage. The longer the game goes and the more we sort of trade evenly, it's not good. Um, I've effectively traded most of my Separatist Bomber and about half a Watt for almost all of Hollow. Um, sort of roughly an equal trade. So let's skip through the log as we set our dials. Okay, so let's talk about this round. Um, for my Separatist Ace, I'm looking at Backdraft here and thinking Backdraft's best move is to do a one forward. Um, sort of moves you the minimum distance away from my squad, lets you take an action. I want to punish that. So I want to go two forward, I want to boost, focus. And that should give me a range one unimpeded shot into backdraft. And I mean, it's sort of not great. That's not the ship I want my ace to be shooting, but Ember and Hollow are too far away. So shooting a backdraft hopefully will punish a one forward. Um, for my other ships, I want to turn them around. Like these ships are going to go in behind me. That's the only real place where they can go and follow me. And I need to turn them around as quickly as possible. Um, my Separatist Bomber, I'm sort of... I'm wanting to get it out of the line of fire to preserve it and hopefully get his plasma missile off. Um, in retrospect, huge mistake. Like, this guy never gets to shoot again. Um, I should have just done a two-turn and another two-turn, and that would have given my Separatist Bomber, like, a good position to shoot back. He would have had to kill it that round. Otherwise, it would have, you know, gotten a shoot off with target lock focus, like, target lock calculate, like... Would have been pretty good. Would have you know, been a range for all the network calculations. Um, other crucial mistake is Watt is doing a three bank, a three swoop left. Um, it's going to overlap with my tub. And running it in my, your own ships, never great, especially when you're doing it and trying to do a sloop. Um, pretty, pretty bad mistake for me. I should have just done a... I don't know. I guess I could have done like a 1k turn with the Trade Federation drone, and that would have freed up the three right sloop. I think that maybe would have been the play. So, and one of the other reasons I went over here was I kind of thought Hollow might... I wasn't really... I hadn't played with the TIE BAs before. I forgot that they... I didn't realize they had the one hard turn blues. 
So they're they're heavily incentivized to just sort of turn it and follow me. Um, we see Ember just like pushes in with that Daredevil. Um, Hello picks up some actions. Um, Ember puts a shot into Separatist Bomber um, and misses. I think I spent my Calculate token. Um, Hollow shoots Watt and rolls four hits. Here, it's the second time I get shot outside of my arc. I have Solus 1. I should have been re-rolling um, a die from Ember's shot, and I should have been rolling a die here, um, potentially keeping me alive for an extra turn, keeping my focus so good on all my ships. Um, pretty big mistake. Something definitely not to forget in the future. Um, Okay, here's Ember's shot, Separatist Bomber. Okay, yep, spin my, spin my Calculate token. And Backdraft, okay, so he missed this part when he moved earlier. Backdraft did a five forward. Um, to not only, I mean, it did avoid um, my ace, but it actually was one too far, and he doesn't have a shot on ace, he doesn't have a shot on Separatist Bomber, when before he could have potentially, you know, potentially killed Separatist Bomber at range. And the bigger problem with this position, not only is missing a shot, but he's now like up way close to the edge of the board. He's like gonna be out of the fight for like multiple turns. He has to turn and turn again. And honestly, this is the sort of thing that like probably loses him the game is having backdraft way too, too far out of the fight. Um, you see in a minute, I end up shooting at him with so one of the one of the things to do, none of my PS3 ships have a shot. I have two ships that have a shot here, uh, Tub and my Vulture Droid. Um, Vulture Droid only has one shot on Hollow. Um, Tub would rather shoot Ember, it's a range one shot, but if I have to shoot Hollow to take him out of the game, I will. So Vulture Droid misses a shot, Tub rolls three hits. And... Yeah, so that's, so far, it's only, I think, one Calculate token I've had to spend. So many of them. Okay, so where do I go from this position? Um, Vulture Droid, I think, does a, can do, look at my dials. Vulture Droid wants to come in. Um, Ember has a couple different options. Generally, you're going to want to disengage. I want to like link up with sort of backdraft while backdraft is coming in ember can like turn around and position itself to come back in with support um generally ember does not want to fight 4v1 okay so like i said here i'm doing a two turn nice blue move clears my stress i pick up a target lock here target locks are better in general for the separatist droids, uh, generally because calculate tokens are just like they're like half as good as a focus token. So target locks like ninety percent of a focus token calculates half. Like go for the better turn, and it's also really useful when you're playing against aces that might arc dodge you. You can like bank the action, and then later on, you know you have calculate target lock, and you can really hit through their th you know three agility dice and focus later on. Um, I do a hard turn here. I'm not. So, and here I forget that I want to drop a prox mine. I have two prox mines on top. This is more of like a zoning prox mine. If he wants to try and like hard turn this way around me, um, sort of makes it harder to do that. Um, so I do end up walking Ember here. Um, the, the tie BAs are really bad when they do not have um, actions, like they get that free action for taking by taking a strain and disarm, and then they get the normal action. Like if they don't get those, they're like pretty frail. So he shoots a tub again. Sort of the, the bad part about this maneuver, I was trying to get Ember to block on a tub so that my Separatist Bomber could shoot him. Um, trade for registration drone could shoot him, SA can shoot him. Like that would have been the ideal position, but Separatist Bomber ends up being the one that gets bumped. Um, it's the only reason why I can really get shot into tub. Um, end up getting a little bit lucky. He rolls, hit crit, I roll 
double evade. Pretty gawky. Um, Separatist Bomber here um, clears his uh, damage sensor array. Um, it would have been really nice if he would have been able to like barrel roll over, then he could have like potentially traded shots with Emperor. Um, that would have been ideal, but he had a damage sensor array. He had to clear it this turn. Um, so had to be done. Okay. Um, a good shot into Emperor managed to do only one damage, but at least kill his stealth device. Um, Trajectory Drone can't roll for three hits, and he needs to evade, so he sort of he manages to squeak through this round, but this is like this is a really bad position for Ember. All my ships are focusing on one of his ship. He's not, you know, not getting actions. So this is this is the kind of turns I need to get the game under control. Um, he needs to buy time to get Backdraft back into position. So how does he do that? Um, this is another round where I think I don't make ideal moves. It's sort of, I sort of had a hard time predicting where Ember would go, um, which really should not be that quite hard. Um, this Proxmine here, he can't really like turn in over this way, especially with Trade Federation drone potentially blocking over there. Um, he has to go out this way or over here. So let's through. Um, my Techno Union Bomber, I'm not, not sure about this move. I have, like, I can two turn either way. I guess this move is blocking the, like, retreat in this, or reposition in this sort of general direction, like, sloop over here. Like, those sorts of moves is generally effective against, and I'm still picking up a target lock. And, you know, next turn I can, like, you know, Two talent roll over this way and be in a fairly decent position. Um, and like I said before, all my ships are picking up target locks. I kind of anticipate him getting away. Um, if he chooses to like stay in the area and does those one turns, like he can get blocked. Like my ace is in a good position to potentially finish him off. But he chooses to go away and like reposition for later rounds. So picking up all those target locks is pretty valuable. This target lock of his own. And he does what I would consider another potential mistake. He does this like um, daredevil boost here. And this is putting him in a really predictable spot. He really is forced to do like a one bank or two bank right into this alley. Like um, it's going to take him so long to reposition out this way. I mean, he still could do a one right turn um, daredevil boost again, but it's pretty slow. Like he's not gonna be able to shoot that round next round if he does that. Okay, so this is one of the very few examples where you get value from homing missiles. Um, Ember has a target lock on my Separatist bomber. Backdraft uses Ember's targeting synchronizer to shoot a homing missile at Separatist bomber who had two HP. Um, I take the one HP. I said just to take one damage instead of rolling 4v2. And yeah, one of the one of the very few times homing missile is actually a good upgrade. Is you know, two HP down to one HP, and next round, you know, he essentially auto kills separatist. I have my separatist bomber. So but like I was saying, this this daredevil boost, really predictable. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and punish him for that. And like I said, Tub's turning around. Backdraft slowly getting into position, still a little far away. But next round, we potentially have both ships. We can go in here and like Daredevil boost and try and get behind my guys. So question is, how do you punish this sort of pretty obvious turn in here? Um, I do finally decide to take Separatist Bomber off of here. Um, I'm kind of unfamiliar with uh flying separatists i should have you know like found the time to like barrel roll off of here instead of staying on there um and like i said this is again like it's trying to preserve this guy but he has one hp he's gonna die anyway i should be trying to find a way to take him into the fight 
and this is not the way to go. Okay, like, I mean, even if he had turned and faced um, north, he would potentially have had a shot next turn, and Backdraft would have had to shoot him to take him out of the, the game. So, you know, this honestly was a pretty good move. If it wasn't so vulnerable being blocked, he could have two turned here, get barrel roll over this way, and then potentially like boost, like be right in here, only be taking one shot. Um, but yeah, he, he was vulnerable, now he gets punished. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to get punished for having my Separatist Bomber be out of the way, because now Backdraft is going to have a range one shot at this my ace instead of having to kill Separatist Bomber. So not ideal. Um, Tub has range three shot. I have uh, my missiles, my uh, or the concussion missiles. So my goal going into this, my ace still has, doesn't have any damage card. Um, I was really hoping to do one shield, one hole, and then flip up a uh, damage card, potentially into a direct hit. Um, so he rolls four dice. Um, I'm like, hey man, he not only rolls four dice, he rolls two of eights. I'm like, you know, not, not what I was hoping for. If he didn't roll one of eight, like, I don't know if I would have cared too much. But he rolled two, so I'm like, hey man, you gotta re-roll an extra dice, re-roll them. And he rolls triple aids. So a little bit lucky for my opponent, but at this point I'm like still in the still in the driver's seat. Like I'm a little bit ahead. Um, um Trade Federation drone does one damage to backdraft. Um generally like these three ships are working together, they're in a pretty good position. Um Separatist Bomber said this before like he doesn't know what he's doing he's like out of position um at best he's gonna soak up one shot at worst he's gonna like trigger my own prox mine and i'll you know, team kills one of my own guys so where should we where should we be looking to go um only good option for separatist ace like you can't two turn in um the only real good play is to do a sloop um i go with the left sloop to give me a good line going back in straight. We'll see, Separatist Bomber, only no option, has to go this way to get around. So I'm generally just trying to coordinate um, these three ships to line up shots, multiple shots on the same turn. Trying where I can to like block my opponents, deny them actions. Yeah, pretty, pretty good, pretty good stuff. So that's why I bear roll here with Trade Federation Drake is to try and block backdraft. Okay. Does another another big use of uh, Daredevil here to get in position. Um, backdraft again gets blocked. This is like really getting pretty bad for my opponent. Um, he would really like to rotate his turret in the back, shoot at Separatist Ace, potentially try and kill this guy. This guy you know, has the most attack dice. It's definitely the ship he wants to be shooting at, but instead his, his ship is locked, you know, with this firing arc facing forwards and he's not getting value from his ability. Um, this is another like clever trick for my opponent. My opponent is uh, using cluster missiles to kill Separatist Bomber. So he's not having to, he's, the goal is to not waste a shot into Separatist Bomber when he could be shooting someone else. Cluster missile Separatist Bomber and then cluster missile someone else getting getting two shots. Um, is it? Pretty good idea. He does um, just kill my ship, and then he, then I forget that he's trying to do cluster missiles, take the ship off the board, have to bring it back. But um, Tub is too far away. It's in it's in it's in um, Ember's firing arc. Um, Trade Federation droid is close enough to Separatist bombers, but it's not in arc, so can't take the second cluster missile shot. Um, Tub again, just like taking way too many shots and not taking any real damage from it. Um, sort of put some more damage into backdraft. Um, now I have half HP on him, one point hit point away from taking half HP off Ember. Like this is the point where it's starting to look like a real game. All my ships are 
generally like coordinating together. Um, his ships are struggling to get sort of the same coordination and damage output. Um, um, here's another prox mine, generally just sort of a zoning off. Like I don't anticipate going over here. Maybe you'll get my maybe my opponent will have gone over there for some reason. Probably not, but this is sort of like area zoning, area control. Um, so again, like I could could have like K turned there, but generally just moving my ships to sort of potentially block Ember and get to shoot at him. Ember like did a one turn in the Trade Federation draw and then Tub gets to shoot at him, like trying to like do those sorts of moves to punish my opponent. So he wisely does a two bank. Generally a pretty good move. Um he's sort of stuck here. If he did a barrel roll, even a barrel roll backwards, and then a daredevil boost, he's he's stuck going over this prox mine. So it is providing some value here and that he can't sort of escape from Tub's arc. Alright, so backdraft shoots my trade federation drone. Um Again, all these attacks are not doing very much damage because he's not getting actions. Um, Ember does, ends up not having a shot. Ends up not having a shot in turn. Um, here, as much as much as Ember is the ship I want to kill, um, Ember has a focus token, and Backdraft has a range one shot, no action. So you got to sort of finish ships off, even if Backdraft is not nearly as threatening as Ember. One of those things that sort of have to sometimes you're if you're forced to switch targets and as much as you would like to focus on the real threat like ember backdraft is just too valuable um to not kill and i managed to push two damage through so okay so what so generally, this is the sort of position you want to be in as the like swarm player. All your opponent ships running low on HP. Your ships reasonably healthy. My ace is a little bit low, but if I have a focus token, I should be able to live one shot, maybe. So from here, let's bring up my dials and we'll talk about why I chose the maneuvers I did. Um, Trade Federation is doing a one turn sort of keep it in the fight. Backdraft likes to just drive straight forward. Um, sort of the best option for him. Maybe he can do a two turn up, but that risk getting in the way of Ember. So, you know, it's a pretty, pretty solid move to keep you in the shot. Could have also done a two Talon roll, but... The other advantage to doing this is now my um, Trade Federation drone is next to Tub. So I can network calculate over. All right. So here he finally gets to um, rotate his arc to the rear, but he's in a pretty bad position. I have two shots on him. He only gets one shot back. And Ember makes, or it's like the last mistake of the game, um, running plaque, running to squarely into Scoy and Ace. Like, um, Scoy and Ace only did a. Uh, a two forward just to sort of like set up that block like he was pretty obviously going to do like a one turn like barrel roll up this way maybe daredevil if i was out of out of his way so pretty pretty big block to set up um the game sort of the log file ends here um but we had some disconnect issues but we ended up playing it out anyway just for this round um backdraft shoots going ace um, misses. I spend my focus token due to hotshot gunner. Um, Scoy and Ace shoots back to backdraft. Misses. Trade Federation drone finishes off. And with the last shot of the game, Tub shoots a missile straight at um, Ember. I roll three hits. It rolls blanks. And I take two of ships off the board in the same round. So, I mean, in general, I have to say this game was not... I don't think this game was particularly well played by either one of us. Um, my 4x4 formation is, I mean, it's generally not the best formation, particularly with these four ships. 
but it's pretty like it's sort of like a solid middle of the road option like you're forcing your opponent you're saying here are my ships they're all working together they're all going to shoot at you if you venture into the wrong place like you have to do some clever um, boosts and barrel rolls and moves to like flank my position and if you don't outplay me i'm just going to sort of be ahead because all my ships are working together um probably not the best strategy because i mean people have people know what to do you, you like flank it from two sides simultaneously like he did um yeah um i mean i think the real weakness of the type BAs is if they don't complete their maneuver they don't get that bonus action they don't get their normal action and then they're just rolling three attack dice three defense dice and naked dice are not good even against you know droids with their lower attack value and thanks to sort of like banked actions with target locks and generally just sort of putting multiple shots in the same ship i'm eventually able to sort of pull it out um definitely i really had the potential to be really far behind the second round of combat like was crucial um if i had not put any damage into hollow like i would have been i would have like lost the game if it had, if i had put zero damage into hollow it would have just had both the ships behind me in good positions they would have, you know, been able to trade damage effectively, and they would have been ahead. And I would have lost, you know, effectively lost my Separatist Bomber, totally lost Watt. And, you know, I'd be, I'd be really lucky to kill Hollow if I hadn't put damage on the second round. But that said, if, if my opponent had completely lost Hollow in that second round of shooting, if I just rolled four hits and he rolled blanks, like, he would have just lost the game on the spot. So it was definitely really dependent on like that one roll of the dice even if that roll did didn't end up favoring me with all the re-rolls and focus tokens um and then the other thing that i think why well, i mentioned this before but sending backdraft on the five forward and up here and then arcing back around it really just took backdraft out of the fight i mean i think he wanted me to like chase backdraft and then he wanted me to not get shot by separate his ace but you had to keep backdraft in the fight at best i mean alternative doing a five forward you should have done like a k turn Something that you turned around and back head in this direction. And if you had done a K turn and Separatist Ace was like here, and you were here, then you potentially would be able to like trail after Separatist Ace and get shots into, you know, unprotected rear arc. And that would have been good. But yeah, that was sort of the struggle was getting value out of backdraft versus me getting value out of my missiles and prox mines, which. I mean, it's sort of struggled to do, but they at least got a bit of zoning value. So yeah, that was that was my first round. Definitely a lot to improve on in terms of my um, pretty basic four by four box strategy. Like, there's got to be a better way to fly this. Probably in a looser formation. Like, these ship styles are so different that keeping Watt next to my other ships and like turning him around while my other ships turning around is pretty pretty challenging. Definitely something I'm going to work on improving. And then I'm um, just trying to remember all of like the ability triggers. Like I definitely missed Watts um, rerolls both defensively and offensively and definitely could have potentially kept him in the game an extra round, which would have been extremely valuable. So yeah, that's, that's my first game. Um, pretty interesting format having, you know, these sort of jank lists. Um, I'm just hopeful I don't get another opponent with triple gas clouds and that moves after me. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the summary and potentially talk to you guys at uh, the next game.